Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the new subscribers. And as promised, guys, this is going to be part two of the Demonic Diva Female Narcissist video. Now, in part one, we talked about female narcissists who are very toxic and dangerous in regard to their relationships with men and how they manipulate, lie, deceive the men in their life. Well, now we're going to be talking about female platonic friendships and how toxic they can be and how you can protect yourself from these friends that come as a being of light. You know, they will approach as helpful friends and offer a lot of things to you that sound great. And you're in need of a friend when you are recovering from narcissistic abuse. But it's so much better, guys, to wait, to spend time alone, to get to know God first so you can have the discernment and the wisdom to know who is of God and who is of, who is not. Now, these female narcissists, uh, some can be, you know, lower on the spectrum of narcissism and some can be extremely dangerous and toxic. So you have to be careful. Now, I've encountered both, and I've heard a lot of situations that were very harmful to people and really altered their life. So, it's not to be taken lightly. If somebody comes into your life that is love-bombing you, the same as any narcissist, but in the friendship sense, hey, you're so great, hey, we have a lot of things in common, let's go here, let's go there, uh, call me tonight, and they're rushing this friendship along, uh, basically, you have to remember the narcissist found a new toy, and that's you many times. And it's going to be the same love bombing as in any narcissistic relationship. The telltale signs are when the mask drops, you know, or when you tell them no, or you put up boundaries, as usual. That's when you're going to see the real person, and you're going to find out how they really treat their friends. And many times you're shocked because, again, you find out they're a narcissist. Now, let's go over some of these things that they do that would be, you know, telltale signs. Now, in the beginning, of course, they'll love bomb, throw compliments, you know, they'll buy you gifts, even though they're just a friend. You know, it's like overkill with the friendship. And they'll start inviting you to all kinds of things. And if they're a Christian narcissist, they'll invite you to church and church functions and all these things and get real close to you right away, super fast. Well, these types of narcissistic female friends really have no empathy, as we know. Narcissists don't, or compassion. They may act like that. They may tell you how they help their neighbor and they're helping out at the church. But actually, you know, see how they act with you. Are they compassionate that you have had trauma in your life and you're trying to heal? Or do they rush you along? Oh, just forget about that. Why are you talking about this person again? Just get over it. Oh, you already told me that. Just, I don't want to hear it. If they, if they start being impatient like that with your healing process and demanding you to just stuff down emotions again, that's toxic, guys. You don't need that in your healing process. That's not a friend. But a lot of these female narcissistic women will do just that. If they don't want to hear something, they cut you off and are dismissive. The real them starts showing after a while. Lack of patience, self-centeredness, cuts you off, unempathetic, and very self-serving. They also will gossip about their other friends to you, which tells you that they are gossiping about you as well. And everything is everybody else's fault. And you'll come to realize with these female friends that they probably have a trail of people that cut them off. You know, they burn a lot of bridges. And people have been forced to go no contact from them because of their narcissistic behavior. Now, let's get into that. A female narcissist will be enraged suddenly. When they seemed more covert, quiet, introverted, such a good friend, so caring, seemed to have your best interests at hand, well, if you disagree with their opinions, if you disagree with their political views, if you disagree with things that may be not factual, <laughs> and you're asking them to let you know where they got that information, and you disagree with that information... Uh, and you say it calmly, they will spew demons at you. 
They will start screaming, hollering, manifesting demons. It's really something to see because maybe they told their opinions to you for two years or three years or however long the friendship was and you tolerated it. You didn't want to start World War III. You valued the friendship. You stuffed the emotions down and you smiled and casually changed the subject to avoid a fight. You thought, well, this friendship is a good one. It's not worth losing a friendship just over a difference of opinion. You looked at it like they're my friend. They have a difference of opinion. No big deal. It's uncomfortable. I can't ever say my opinion, but uh, I respect their opinion. It's, I'm just going to change the subject. And then all of a sudden, you know, after years of listening to the narcissistic females' thoughts, opinions, and viewpoint on life, you just give one of your opinions and then watch the demons spew. <laughs> this actually happened to me. I was sitting on the couch having a good day. I was getting things done with my, my work, and the phone rang. I picked it up. It was a good conversation with uh, a female suspected narcissist, covert narcissist, and uh, conversation was fine. Then all of a sudden, they started saying things that were not factual about someone, and I just disagreed. I said, I don't think that's true. Where did, where did you hear this from? Where did you get this information from? And all of a sudden, a uh, demon spewed on the other end of the phone. They couldn't understand that maybe I had my own opinion. And I told them, well, you know, for two years, I haven't voiced my opinion on that. You brought up this subject numerous times. And this is my opinion on it. I kept the peace. I never really spoke my mind. But I think what you're saying really is upsetting me because it's not true, and I'm going to voice my opinion on it. And I did, calmly, and she lost it, just started screaming, hollering on the phone. And at that point, I set boundaries. I'm a different person. I do not take abuse anymore, guys, and neither should you. I sent boundaries, and I said, I'm sorry, I didn't pick up the phone to listen to this verbal abuse, so all I did was air my opinion, and I'm going to hang up the phone because, uh, again, I didn't pick up the phone to be verbally abused. What followed that was text messages telling me, you owe me an apology. How dare you scream at me on the phone? <laughs> I mean, it was unbelievable. Talk about twisting the facts. It was, you know, the maddening stuff that narcissists do. They flip it around, blame you. They accuse you of doing whatever they did. And it was all in the text messages. And then it said, don't call me ever again until you apologize. And I thought, I haven't called you for six months. I mean, they called me. And yet I was accused of calling them. I was accused of screaming at them on the phone. I was accused of, you know, abusing them on the phone, which I'm sure was the slime campaign after that, you know, telling everybody that that's what I did. It's maddening. It's very maddening. But that's typical female friend narcissistic behavior. They don't take no for an answer. Uh, they have to control you and your thoughts. You can't think any differently from them. If you do, they can bully, they can be intimidating, and they'll make your life miserable. They'll make your life miserable if you disagree with them. So people end up staying quiet, mute, not talking around them letting them dominate the conversation, their opinions rule, and you just end up waiting to, uh, you know, hopefully voice your opinion, but you really don't because you know what's going to happen. If you voice your opinion, it's going to be World War III breaking out with one of these types. So you become silenced again, and your your opinion is devalued and not respected you're not allowed to voice your opinion. So if you have a female friend that's doing that to you, if you find yourself not voicing your opinion on something because you're afraid of what they're going to say or do or how they're going to behave, that's a very toxic friend, and you really need to get out of that. You should feel safe talking to your friend. You should feel like they have your back. They want the best for you. But these types really want to dominate you. They want to tell you what to think and feel. Um, they don't reveal that up front. Again, it's love bombing. But when the mass drops and you start seeing who they really are, they're very pushy. 
with their thoughts and they really don't accept anybody that dis disagrees with them. It causes narcissistic injury and rage. Also, guys, these types of female narcissistic so-called friends are very competitive. They can't stand anybody shining or being successful around them. Misery loves company. Now, a lot of these covert female narcissists are the woe is me people. They can't get a job. They can't support themselves. They mooch off of people. They'll make every excuse possible as to why life dealt them a bad card. So if you have any successes in your life, God forbid you tell them about it because there's going to be silence on the other end of the phone. They're going to get very catty. And instead of being happy for you, genuinely as a, a good, true, and authentic friend would be, these type of narcissistic friends will probably go silent on the phone for a while, followed by some cutting, devaluing remarks, such as, well, <laughs> you know, if you want to do something like that, I mean, I'd hate it, but, you know, if you like that, fine. I would just go crazy if that was presented to me. I mean, I would never do it. I mean, they'll just cut it right down, whatever it is. It could be a job opportunity. It could be a project you're working on. It could be a relationship. It could be anything that you're very happy about and is a positive thing in your life. This, this type of female friend won't be very receptive and won't be very supportive about it. They'll see you as competition. God forbid you have some good luck and something good happening that's positive in your life. They can't stand it. They really want to bring you down. Now, if you've just left a narcissistic relationship or a narcissistic family or a narcissistic boss or work environment, the last thing you need while recovering is to have this friend devalue you again and have their narcissistic rage fly if you just simply voice a thought or an opinion. So really, if you see these signs, I would definitely... You know, think twice about that friend because uh, it's just repeating the abuse and it just gets worse. These types will really spew demons and see you as their sounding board and their punching bag. They have to take it out on somebody if they're unhappy with their life and it's going to be you because you have, you know, target or victim written all over your head during your healing process. You know, if you're suffering from PTSD and have been traumatized by a prior narcissistic relationship, it's going to take a while before you process what happened and you get yourself back and your confidence back. You will never really return fully to the person you were. I'm just being honest about that. But you're going to be a better version. You're going to spot these types faster. You're going to have more assurance that uh, you're going to make better choices in the future especially about the people that you have friendships with or other types of relationships with. You'll have the knowledge and knowledge is power. Also, just a word of warning, guys. I have heard of so many cases where these new friends who ended up to be severely narcissistic, how they set up traps for the target. And the target was once again entrapped in something they couldn't get out of. So be very, very wary if your narcissistic female friend wants you to move in with them or go halves on a house together or to uh, go at, in as partners with some business venture or perhaps, you know, hey, let's be roommates or let's go traveling together. Whatever it is, you really should know the person very, very well before you go under any type of roof with them or you're dependent on them in any way. It's too close for comfort and it may be a trap, I'm sorry to say. Sometimes these narcissists are very, very covert and they go under the radar. They're very stealth-like and their intention is to control you, just like most narcissists. So they will present some job opportunity maybe that's too good to be true, some other business venture that's too good to be true, or a living situation that sounds great. But take your time. You are healing from narcissistic abuse. And again, you do not want to fall prey for yet another entrapment by a narcissist. 
Now, these types of narcissistic female friends won't respect you or your time. You know, they tend to be kind of lackadaisical. They do things when they feel like it. Everybody's got to adjust to them because they're narcissists. So they assume that you have absolutely nothing to do with your day. And uh, if you make plans for them, say at noon, 12 noon, they'll could show up at 1 30, 2 o'clock and just say that they're so busy and they had stress and you don't know how stressful their day was and everything's so hectic. Uh, your life probably has a lot more responsibilities than their life. You know, perhaps they don't have kids or they're still living with family at home. They're not paying bills. A lot of covert narcissists just find a way to tell a sob story and uh, they kind of live off other people sometimes. And your situation may be you have a lot of responsibility. Maybe you're a parent. Maybe you're head of household. Maybe you're working multiple jobs to get by and pay bills. Well, this female narcissist still wants everything adjusted to them. So if this happens once in a while, yes, things happen. But if it happens all the time, they're not respecting you. They're not respecting your time. And you need to put up the boundaries. You need to let them know that you have responsibilities, that your time is important and that you feel taken advantage of. Now, what happens when you set boundaries again with these types of women? They don't like it. They think, ah, oh, who is she to set boundaries with me? How dare she respect herself, right? If you don't take their abuse, if you don't take their disrespect for your life or time or your days and your responsibilities, then they will walk all over you with more. They'll take advantage of more and more. And when you speak up for yourself, believe me, they've already had a slime campaign campaign in place against you. It, it just intensifies. So there's really not a lot of good that comes out of a relationship like this, guys, if indeed they have these signs of being a female narcissistic friend. It's not really a friend. It's somebody that wants to drag you down. They don't want to hear your successes. They don't want you to get ahead. They will minimize any success that you have and scoff at it. Uh, th they will go MIA when you need them, but when they need a friend, they'll call you up and, and insist you talk to them, and you being good-hearted, you usually do, right? But it's not even. It's not equal. And you sense that they have a deep resentment for you. So you have to dance around them with your conversation. You're walking on eggs. You can't tell them what you really think because they get upset and spew demons. You can't tell them you have this great opportunity uh, in your job or your personal life because they'll spew demons and they'll get resentful. Uh, you can't tell them 99% of a lot of things you want to. And you can't call them on their lies Many times you hear these female narcissists spinning a lot of grandiose lies, don't you? Who they know, what they did, their accomplishments, the schools they never attended, um, the events that never happened in their life. And you're just supposed to listen to it. But God forbid if you say anything that is honestly true that happened in your life, they can't take it. <laughs> so do you need this person as a friend, guys? I'm not here to break up friendships by any means. The Lord wants us to uh, be with other people and uh, especially believers and to, uh, you know, have a church together, meaning the people of God uniting together. But if somebody is toxic in your life, if somebody is an obstacle to you being your authentic self and fulfilling God's calling in life and takes your joy away, if your smile is gone around this person, if you're walking on eggs, if you feel like you're not enough, that person is not from God. That's not a friendship God wants you to have. So bless the person, wish them well, pray for them. But I would stay away. I would stay away from that person. So I hope this was helpful, everybody. And let me know in the comments below if you have encountered a female uh, so-called friend that had these narcissistic uh, behavior patterns and what you did about it and what happened when the mask you know finally fell off and you saw the real person what did they manifest that told you that you needed to stay away from this person 
curious to find out. Also, if you guys need prayer, put it in the comments below. You know I always pray for all of you. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one Christian guidance about any uh, type of issue in your life, please email me at angelhavenministry at gmail.com, and I will tell you how to do that. So once again, everybody, thanks so much. Please make sure you follow on Facebook and Rumble on Rumble as well. And make sure you hit the like button and share these videos and that you are subscribed. It helps the channel to grow and I'm hoping we can get the subscribers to 10,000 very soon. So once again, everybody, thanks so much. There'll be more videos coming up and I want to hear your comments. So I'll see you next time, guys. God bless.